Hello, YouTubers, friends, compatriots. Bootlicker, shields, death, slice, earth, peasants, fastles, minions, meat sacks. I'm a useful idiot. Welcome. And uh, today I want to do something kind of unusual. And it's not drink a cup of coffee. That's uh, highly usual for me. Uh, no, the unusual thing I'm going to do is discuss a question posed in a video I watched. And the question is, why would uh, a, an American uh, sympathize with Russia, uh, particularly over the situation in Ukraine. So I thought that was, you know, a fairly legitimate question. And more importantly, I thought I could probably answer, but it would take um, creating a model, and, that, and that's what I've done, creating a model to demonstrate objectively uh, what position uh, Russia is in right now. And uh, that will help explain why, uh, in this scenario, uh, I, for one, uh, sympathize with Russia, just historically and objectively. And uh, I wish I could say uh, that the United States is the good guy in these scenarios. I really do. But uh, unfortunately, the facts do not bear that out. So let's get to my my discussion. And that is basically to switch the roles and uh, discuss the idea of not uh, the United States or Russia intervening in uh, Ukraine, but the United States and Russia intervening in Mexico. And it uh, makes a good comparison uh, because Mexico is uh, right on the U.S. border and certainly within the legitimate interests of the United States. And Ukraine is uh, on the border of Russia and, and was a part of Russia for 800 years and therefore makes a legitimate, legitimate uh, um, interest of Russia's. So let's, uh, let's get right down to this because this could take a little bit. Uh, so the basic premise is, let's say that Mexico had been part of the United States for the last 400 years uh, when this area uh, and continent was colonized. And uh, only in the last 20 years did uh, Mexico become independent from the United States. And then let's say that in northern Mexico, most of the uh, citizens are former U.S. citizens and English speaking and were there. And many Americans were still commuting back and forth to work in northern Mexico. And then uh, let's also say that uh, North Mexico uh, has uh, aspirations to rejoin the United States, uh, particularly as uh, Mexico leans to foreign interests. And then uh, let's also remember uh, that Russia, of course, is thousands of miles away from Mexico and would seem to have little legitimate interest in Mexico uh, other than in an effort for Russia to undermine uh, the United States by uh, 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 intervening in uh, destabilizing uh, Mexico just south of the United States border. And then uh, just to uh, take it one step further, let's suggest that the United States Pacific Fleet uh, it was stationed in Baja uh, even though the U.S. had only given Baja to, to Mexico in the 1950s. And obviously I'm making a reference to Crimea, but let's just say that that the U.S. Pacific Fleet had been stationed in Baja for all those uh, 400 years and that uh, only recently had uh, Baja, in the last uh, 50 years, had Baja been given to Mexico. But the, uh, the United States Pacific Fleet is still uh, stationed there uh, in a special arrangement. So, uh, so then let's uh, go to the, the next step, discussing uh, Mexico and Russia and the United States' relationship to it as compared to the situation in Ukraine. So let's say over the last several years that Russia had been funding and organizing opposition groups in Mexico, spending over uh, $2 billion or so. And then uh, let's also say that Russia has been wooing Mexico away from the U U.S. economic circle and that Mexican oil imports and pipelines were being uh, threatened. And, uh, and in fact, U.S. export of natural gas through Mexico to Latin America was threatened. So it seems like uh, the United States would have some interest in uh, Mexico, and people would be wondering why uh, Russia has any interest in Mexico other than uh, destabilizing it as a threat to the United States. And um, then uh, let's say that Russia, through the China Development Bank, had set up uh, massive bailouts uh, for Mexico and, uh, and had uh, helped to instigate a program of austerity and uh, therefore uh, economic slavery. Uh, let's remember also that Mexico's government is corrupt and run by Mexico's drug cartels and is a failed state. 
Uh, and ironically, that part of my scenario is actually rather accurate. Uh, Mexico's government and police and military are all infiltrated by the uh, Mexican drug cartels. And this, of course, is a correlation with all the neo-Nazis and uh, corruption that we find in Ukraine. And, uh, and then, uh, just as we have in Ukraine, we have oligarchs running the country. In uh, Mexico, we have uh, Mexican cartels and drug gangs that uh, run the country in much the same way. And uh, that's also where all the money is. And, uh, and then let's say that uh, 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 finally that, uh, of course, we end up seeing Russia supporting a coup in Mexico. And then Russia end up ha handpicking cartel members, drug cartel members, and Russian citizens to lead the government in uh, Mexico. And then we find uh, the U.S. annexes Baja, home of the Pacific U.S. fleet. They annex that, that back in, in the face of this Russian threat. And then the uh, U.S. Uh, also annexes Cuba just to protect it from uh, further Russian expansion. And, uh, and then uh, the U.S., of course, would turn around and supply and support weapons to the North Mexicans, the English-speaking former U.S. citizens uh, who inhabit North Mexico particularly in light of this uh, Russian effort and infiltration uh, to, in order to destabilize Mexico and turn it against uh, the United States. And so both Russia and Mexico uh, bring in more mercenaries to help fight this proxy war. And uh, many volunteers and, uh, from the United States, including U.S. military, show up in North America. That wouldn't be surprising at all, would it, uh, to have a lot of volunteers and, uh, in the United States uh, ending up uh, putting U.S. soldiers uh, surreptitiously in northern Mexico to fight these uh, these uh, uh, government Mexican puppet government uh, set up by the Russians in southern Mexico, and uh, and of course we would support the separatist movement in North Mexico and its wishes to uh, perhaps someday reunite with the United States and our own form of government, and. Uh, and then in, in, in the scenario too, let's let's just say for shits and giggles uh, that a Latin American plane heading to Canada gets shot down. So in this scenario, with uh, Russia infiltrating Mexico and the United States' interests in that region, and a Latin American plane gets shot down uh, heading to Canada, who do you think would have a motive to do so? Uh, would you, do, would you think it was the uh, Russian-supported rebels in uh, southern Mexico? Would you think it would be the the uh, North uh, Mexico separatists who are uh, ostensibly U.S. citizens, or do you think it would be the United States that uh, would have shot that airplane down? Uh, just food for thought comparing it to the situation in uh, the Ukraine. And then uh, lastly, um, let's, uh, a couple more comparisons are that, that Mexico's corrupt government is uh, uh, now selling Mexico's assets to Russian and Chinese bankers and investors in a fire sale as uh, Chinese and Russian interests uh, strip Mexico clean of, the, of its uh, assets uh, in this vacuum. And, and then we also hear constant reports uh, in Russian media of U.S. aggression in Mexico and, and claims by Russia and Mexico that the U.S. has moved huge invasion columns inside America I mean inside uh, North Mexico, and um, of course, in that scenario, uh, a lot of people would uh, would think that uh, the United States would be uh, justified in having huge invasion columns in uh, uh, North Mexico in a scenario that I've just painted. But uh, one also uh, would look at that situation and say, "Hmm, interesting that the U.S. did not intervene in North Mexico in this scenario. They seem to show admirable restraint under the situation." Um, and considering what's going on in Mexico. So, uh, so there's my little scenario comparing, uh, what if Russia had uh, intervened in, uh, in, uh, Mexico in much the same way that the United States has intervened in the Ukraine and then looking at the, uh, Russian reaction to what happened in the Ukraine compared to what a comparable United States reaction would be to an intervention in Mexico. So, uh, just in, exercise in uh, uh, being objective and finding out uh, why would anyone want to sympathize with Russia in, in this situation over the Ukraine. I hope this was uh, at least entertaining for some of you. I'm a useful idiot. Don't you be one too.